In this video, we are going to talk about how to evaluate improper integrals of type 2. So these are integrals that involve functions that have infinite discontinuities because of vertical asymptotes. All right, so let's begin uh, with a formal definition. So the first part of this says that if f is continuous on the interval that includes a, but does not include b, because I have this closed parentheses there, so and f is discontinuous at b, then when I talk about the integral from a to b of f of x, the way we define that is in the following way. So I want to draw a picture of what this might look like first. So if I have some axes, and this is a, and this is b, I need my function to be continuous everywhere on this interval except for at b. So that could happen, for example, if I have a vertical asymptote at b. So if I have a function that's continuous everywhere except for at b, maybe because of a vertical asymptote. And this integral needs to describe, well, what's the area under the graph over that interval from a to b? So the way we'll do that is we'll say, okay, let's replace the b with a t and then keep the rest of this the same, f of x, dx. And then we're going to take a limit as t approaches b. So t is going to get closer and closer and closer to b. So it's going to get closer and closer and closer to b. So it's approaching b from the left-hand side. So I put a negative sign in this exponent. That means I'm approaching b from the left. Okay, so this is saying t approaches b from the left. And then, of course, when we have a limit, sometimes limits exist, sometimes they don't. So my, my integral equals this limit provided the limit exists. So if the limit exists and it's some finite number, we say the integral is that finite number. But if the, if the limit does not exist, like maybe if it's infinity, then we would say that the integral diverges, like we saw earlier for type 1 improper integrals. Okay, so we could do the same type of thing if my function was instead discontinuous at the other endpoint, at a. In that situation, the picture would be flipped. I would have a vertical asymptote maybe at a. So I have a very similar definition. Now we're going to replace the a with t. Keep the rest the same. So b and then f of x dx. And now I'm going to have to take the limit as t approaches a. But if t is approaching a, it would have to be approaching it from the right-hand side. So I'll put a plus sign in the exponent. So recall, this is just notation for a one-sided limit. t approaches a from the right. And just as before, I need to say that this is the case provided the limit exists. So if you feel a little shaky with one-sided limits or just need a refresher, I'll include a link to a video where I talk about one-sided limits in the description. Okay, so one more situation. What if my function is discontinuous at some value c that is in between the endpoints a to b? So if it's discontinuous somewhere in the middle, I need to split up my integral into two pieces. Going from a to c, f of x, dx, and then another piece going from c to b, f of x, dx. And I can say that my integral equals the sum of these two pieces where I'm splitting it at that discontinuity point provided this time we'll need both the integrals on the right to converge. We need both of them to end up just being finite numbers. So on the flip side, if either one of these integrals over here, if either 
diverges, either one, or it could be both, then the integral on the left also diverges. So then we say that integral on the left from a to b, f of x, dx, diverges as well. All right, so let's zoom it out so that we can look at these formulas. Okay, so I'm gonna highlight all of these. All right, so I've highlighted them. So in this third situation, where my function is discontinuous somewhere in the middle, if I go back to this first picture that I had up here, now the vertical asymptote would be occurring somewhere in the middle of these two endpoints. All right, let's look at an example. So I wanna evaluate the integral from two to five of one over the fourth root of five minus x dx. Okay, so looking at this integral, is this just a regular integral or, or is it an improper integral? So this is improper since our function is discontinuous somewhere on this interval. So our function one over the fourth root of five minus x is discontinuous. I'm just going to abbreviate it, discontinuous, at x equals 5, because when I try to plug 5 into this, it makes the denominator 0. So my function would be undefined, actually, at 5. So it's definitely going to be discontinuous there. So just for reference, here's Desmos, and I want to show what that graph looks like. I've just rewritten that fourth root as a 1 over 4 power. So I'm going to clear that in. And I'm interested in finding the, the integral uh, from 2, so I'll draw on the line x equals 2, to 5, and I'll draw that in. So looking at this, the red curve gets really, really close to the green curve. In fact, it looks like they become exactly the same, but they're not exactly the same. If I zoom it in a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, okay, I gotta keep going. If I really, really zoom it in, we can see that they're actually not exactly the same. So there's a tiny little sliver of area here. All right, so coming back to the notes, I need to replace where that discontinuity happens with a t. So the discontinuity happens at five, I'll replace that with a t, and then have two, and then one over the fourth root of five minus x dx. And now we gotta take a limit. Limit as t approaches five, but we are approaching five from the left-hand side. Because if I think about my interval, from two to five here. If I'm, I, if I'm in my interval and I'm getting really close to five, I have to be approaching it from this side. If I was approaching five from the other side, I wouldn't be in the interval and I need to be somewhere in the interval. Okay, so now let's evaluate this integral. We can handle this with u sub and let's let u be five minus x and then du, the derivative of this is negative one, and I write dx next to it. And if we isolate for dx, we get negative du equals dx. And because we have these limits of integration, and I'm doing u sub, I'm gonna do it this time by switching the limits of integration to be in terms of u. So these are in terms of x right now, because my variable's x. So for x equals two, I take that and I plug it into my substitution. So we'll get u equals five minus two, which is three. And then for the other bound, uh, x equals t, we plug that in and get u equals five minus t. So those are what the bounds are gonna become. So we get that this equals the limit as t approaches five from the left integral the bottom limit becomes three, the upper limit becomes five minus t, and now my function here becomes one over fourth root of u, and then dx is negative du. And now this is a lot easier to take the antiderivative of, because I notice, I notice that this whole thing, I can rewrite as negative u to the negative one fourth, if I rewrite that fourth root as a fractional power, 
and then bring it up to the numerator, it would become negative 1 fourth, and then du. All right, and that's something I can just do the antiderivative of using reverse power rule. So we get the limit as t approaches 5 from the left. And then doing a reverse power rule on this, let's keep that negative in front. And then I'll get u to the 3 over 4 when I add 1 to the power. And then I divide by 3 over 4, which is the same thing as multiplying by 4 thirds, the reciprocal. OK, and then I put a vertical line. And I got to plug in 3 and 5 minus t. So let's do that. OK, so we get the limit as t approaches 5 from the left. If I plug in now, I get negative 4 thirds, 5 minus t to the 3 fourths minus, and I plug in 3, and I get negative 4 thirds times 3 to the 3 fourths. All right, so from here, we are ready to plug in. So let's plug in. Plug in, even though this is a one-sided limit, first try is usually just try plugging the number in straight up. And if there's no issue, like dividing by zero or something like that, that's just going to be our answer. So if we plug in t equals 5 just straight up, what do we get? We get negative 4 thirds, and then we'll get 0 to the 3 fourths plus 4 thirds times 3 to the 3 fourths. So overall, this is just 4 thirds times 3 to the 3 fourths. And that is our answer. That is the area under the graph over the interval from 2 to 5. So if we wanted to, we, we could simplify this further. The 3 on the denominator is technically 3 to the 1. And I could rewrite this as 4 over. If I bring this 3 to the 3 fourths to the denominator, we'd end up getting 3 to the 1 fourths on the bottom. So if I did need to simplify it, I could simplify it to that. So if we look back to the graph, even though the region that we were finding the area of was infinitely long, there was this infinitely long tiny sliver here, it had a finite area. And we've seen a few examples now where that's happened. Even though we have this improper integral, some sort of infinitely long region, the area was finite. We've also seen examples where the area ended up being infinite. It just depends a little bit on what my function is. Now we, we see it by evaluating this integral and then taking that limit. So in the next video, we are going to do another example and talk about a common error that folks make uh, when doing these improper integrals.